You might have heard of deadly volcanoes exploding violently and taking a lot of lives all over the world, but I believe you've probably not heard of the Wakari White Island volcanic eruption, which is definitely a larger fish. A volcanic eruption that has never left the minds of islanders, especially those in New Zealand. It was really incredible and might make you cry. Well, let's not talk too much at this stage. Let's simply get into it. Having said that, do stick around and watch the whole video as I go further into the incredible Wakari White Island volcano eruption. Previous Wakari White Island activities. Wakari White Island is now New Zealand's most active cone volcano with a 48 kilometer offshore location. Over the last 150,000 years, constant volcanic activity has gradually built up the cone. Only around 30% of the volcano's mass, the other 70% is beneath the sea, is located on the island, which has a surface area of roughly 325 hectares. However, compared to other cone volcanoes, like Mount Ruapiu, Tongariro or Taranaki, it is only approximately half as big. In 1769, Captain James Cook gave the island the name White Island, Tepia o Wakari, meaning the dramatic volcano, is its full name in Maori. Wakari White Island became the official name in the NZ Gazette in 1997. White Island, or Wakari, is privately owned. It was designated a private scenic reserve in 1953 and has been the subject of geological and ecological research, as well as tourism. Previous eruptions. Perhaps you are unaware that there have been past catastrophic eruptions before the most recent one in 2019 happened. Well, let's discuss it now. This volcano has recently erupted several times, notably numerous times in the 1980s. In 2000, a significant eruption created a brand new crater, and in 2012, 2013 and 2016, there were minor eruptions. 2016, a brief explosive eruption took place on the evening of April 27. The main crater floor and portions of the crater walls were covered with debris from the blast's surges. During the eruption, the 1978 to 1990 crater complex's bottom was 13 meters deeper and a fresh lake was created in 2018. Volcanic ash was briefly passively released from a vent on the 2012 lava dome in September 2016. 2012 to 2013. On August 5, 2012, there was an explosive eruption followed by an ash emission period. The crater lake then heated up and from October to December 2012, a tiny lava dome was extruded. From February through April 2013, there were bursts of steam and sulfur that destroyed the lake. The lake had returned by June. A second explosive eruption occurred on August 20, and again on October 4, 8 and 11. An enormous landslide entered the lake in November 2015. 1975 to 2000. The longest and greatest eruption event in recorded history took place on White Island from December 1975 to September 2000. This eruption outburst produced a large number of explosions and collapsed craters. Active vents in these craters have been emitting volcanic ash for a long time. The main crater floor sometimes experienced surges and ballistic bombs blocks from explosive eruptions. Late in July 2000, the final significant eruption of this phase blackened the crater floor area in Scoria, displaced a crater lake and created a new explosion crater 150 meters wide. Wakari White Island eruption in 2019. The active stratovolcano island Wakari White Island, which is located in New Zealand's northeastern Bay of Plenty area, erupted violently on December 9, 2019. There were many people on the island at the time, which was a well-liked vacation spot renowned for its volcanic activity. The number of visitors on the island at the time of the eruption was originally estimated to be over 100. Subsequently, this estimate was lowered to 47. 38 of them were tourists on a beach excursion from the 12-day New Zealand cruise liner 
Ovation of the Seas, which had birthed at the port of Tauranga that morning. At the time of the eruption, several tourists were awaiting transportation off the island. 23 individuals were evacuated from the island by tour companies and these ships before it was officially deemed hazardous. One of the boat passengers said that his crew first tried to escape the ash cloud before seeing a large group of individuals on the dock who needed assistance. The initial passengers assisted those who were taken on board the boat by giving them eye drops, water bottles, coats and other items of clothing. The incident was classified by experts as a phreatic eruption, a discharge of steam and volcanic gases that resulted in an explosion and the ejection of rock and ash into the atmosphere. Before the 2019 eruption, the volcano had been exhibiting symptoms of instability for a number of weeks. Due to increasing activity, the volcano was categorized at Volcanic Alert Level 2, which indicates moderate to heightened volcanic unrest. On November 18, volcanic tremors and sulfur dioxide gas were at their highest levels since 2016, suggesting that an eruption was more likely to occur. GNS Science keeps an eye on the island using three web cameras, a seismograph and a microphone to look for volcanic eruptions. The organization also conducts routine inspections to test the soil, water and gas, as well as to monitor surface deformation. Regular visitors came to the island mostly on White Island tours. Before the eruption, the organization published a statement on their website that read, Alert Level 2 is now in effect for Wakari White Island. This rating denotes the possibility of eruption risks and signifies moderate to heightened volcanic disturbance. No matter the warning level, there is always a chance of eruptive activity. Therefore, visitors should be aware of this while traveling with White Island tours. The different levels of our operations on the island are determined by a thorough safety strategy that White Island Tours follows. Casualties On December 9, at 1835, the media was informed that there was one verified death, while many more were presumably dead since several were missing and many more were hurt, seven of them gravely. Authorities said that since the island is blanketed in volcanic ash and stuff, it is still too risky for the emergency services to enter and rescue people. On the island at the time of the eruption were 47 persons, of whom five were killed. 34 were wounded or evacuated, and eight were reported missing and assumed dead, according to the authorities' statements later that day. Eight deaths have now been officially verified, with three more passing away in hospitals over the following days. The death toll now stands at 14, after six more corpses were discovered during an operation on the island. As another wounded individual passed away in the hospital on December 14, it was reported that the death toll had increased to 15. The death toll rose to 16 the next day with the hospital death of an Australian citizen who had been returned, plus two more fatalities whose corpses had not yet been found. The death toll has now reached 19 victims, including two missing persons who were deemed deceased. Another victim passed away from injuries at a hospital. On January 12, 2020, a second victim passed away in an Australian hospital, bringing the total to 20. Although they have cut down their efforts since January 15, authorities were still trying to find two additional victims. Fatalities. The number of fatalities increased throughout the days that followed the first eruption as corpses were found on the island and other people who had been badly burned died as a result of their injuries. The death toll was reported to have increased to 16 on December 15. There were 13 Australian tourists, three Americans and two New Zealand men who worked as guides for White Island tours, not to include the two individuals who went missing and were ultimately determined to have perished. On December 22, a second victim, a lady from the United States, died from her wounds. As a result, there are now 19 verified deaths, including four Americans. The death toll rose to 21 in January 2020, when two more victims, one each from Australia and the United States, succumbed to their wounds, and the two unaccounted for individuals were formally ruled dead. On July 2, 2020, a German man passed away, raising the death toll to 22. The identification of the dead was done by a number of people, including a pathologist, a forensic dentist, 
and a fingerprint officer due to the serious injuries that those on the island had endured. Officers helped with this by compiling profiles of the victims that included details about their physical characteristics, clothes, photographs, fingerprints, dental and medical histories, and DNA samples. The data was then compared to evidence acquired during the autopsy from the dead person. Missing after an eruption. Rescuers first concentrated their efforts on those who were still alive, leaving the dead on the island. As a result, several individuals were reported missing until their remains were found and properly identified. Authorities said on December 15 that two victims' remains had not been discovered and may have been carried into the sea. The remains, according to police, were first found close to a creek and were carried downstream on December 9 during a significant weather event. The missing two were ruled deceased by the coroner on January 23. It was really a terrible experience, man, and one that humanity never wishes to experience again. Thanks for watching. Your likes and subscription to our channel is one way we'll know you appreciate what we're doing. Please keep it coming. We'd also like to know about your thoughts and feelings over this dreadful volcanic experience. Feel free to drop your comments below in the box provided.